I want to ask that you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 22, verse 34. This morning, the Lord is really speaking to us about being disciples. You know, He wants, and what do, what do we stand for? You know, sometimes in the world, you look at a, a brand name, and you can see what they stand for. You know, you see that little check mark, and what, what they stand for is sneakers. You see a little apple, you see... Uh, what a bike taken out of it, you know, that they stand for computers. You know, you, you see different logos of different things and uh, different organizations and you know what they stand for. Uh, when we look at the cross, when I look at the cross, when I look at, uh, when I think of the church, uh, I think of Jesus, yes, but what does Jesus stand for? What is God's very nature? It's love. That's what God is. God is love. You know, if you read Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 to 40, we can see that all of the 613 commands that are given in the Old Testament uh, are boiled down to two commands uh, given to us in the New Testament, but then also given to us in just one word. And I think sometimes things have to be simplified and boiled down to just one word, a Twitter statement or to, you know, 144 characters or just four letters. In this case, it's uh, L-O-V-E, love. It says in Matthew chapter 22, verse 34, it says, But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, then came gathered them together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That's it right there. Love. Loving the Lord. That's the, that's the great commandment. We went over the greats last week. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On well, these two commands hang all the law and the prophets. This is what I've come to realize. You know, some, I, I, as I was growing up, a lot of people said that, um, and even I kind of had this misbelief, an unbelief, an ungodly belief that love made you weak. It, like opened you up to people being able to hurt you. But in fact, love is the most powerful force on either side of heaven. You know, I remember a situation that a person was going through, and I know that they wouldn't mind me sharing this because they're dear friends of ours. But a couple years ago, uh, Arlene was diagnosed and told that she had cancer. And I was speaking to Gary, and uh, uh, Arlene is an author, and she's written a book about it, and it's an amazing book. I would encourage you to go and to purchase that book or see her. But we were, Gary and I were kind of talking and counting the course about what, what was going on. And, and what I heard from Gary's heart was love. And um, I've always respected Gary, but when he made this statement, it just kind of like got imprinted on me. I was asking, I was like, well, what, do, what are you willing to do? What are you willing to go through to make sure that Arlene has support during this? He says, whatever it takes, whatever it costs. Just those simple statements. And he said it. And he looked at me like with, uh, with like a ferocity. I was like, almost had to remind him, hey, Gary, I'm, I'm not the enemy. I'm your pastor. You know, with friends and stuff. But, but that, was, that was an intense love that he had. And, and love is the most powerful force on either side of heaven. I believe that's what propelled Jesus to take the cross for us. Because he said, whatever it takes, whatever it costs. Because we were in danger and he was going to intervene on our behalf. So uh, those two commands are boiled down to one word, to love. As disciples, we are called to be known by our love. Our love for Him and our love for the people that are around us. I want you to know love is going to get you in trouble sometimes. It's going to bring you into places it has for me. It's brought me to places where I was like, man, you know what? I wouldn't have gone here other than loving this person or individual. It will bring you, but it will also not just bring you to things. It will bring you through things. You know, and sometimes we, we have to keep in mind as we love the Lord, we have to keep Him first. There's been times where I've been challenged, you know. I want to rescue people. I want to make sure that I'm there. And I want, but the Lord is, has at times called me to keep Him first and remind me, and so maybe He's done this with you too, is it's like we want to be people saviors. You know, we want to go and intervene and make sure that people, in the, but you know what? The best thing that we can do for every person that we love is make sure that we are keeping God first in our lives. Yeah. You know, I've met too many husbands that said, well, you know what? I want to save my marriage. You can't save your marriage. 
The only way that you can do it is, is that you got to love the Lord, that love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And then as you do that, you're going to receive the things that you need to love the people that are around you. We can't walk this walk with God being second place. He has to be first place. It's when, when he's in the right place that everything else adds up. You know, and as I, as I heard about this love, I was like, well, you know what? I love people, but I, we, the world throws that word around. I mean, it's almost like cliche. I love cheesecake. Do I love cheesecake the way I love you guys? No. I love you a lot more than I love cheesecake. Does, uh, you know, so there, that word love is almost thrown around. I, I, can, I can relate. Some people sometimes say to me, well, you know what, Rob? I don't want to use the word love. Because, you know, it's so diminished and it's so watered down. I want to encourage you not to, not to go by that, but know the definition of love and then to continue to share the love. Because that's what we are called as disciples to do. We're called to love our brother and our sister. But this is how God defines love. God, God defines love not as a feeling. And I'm not saying that there won't be feelings attached to love, but uh, love is not a feeling. It's a decision. It's a choice. It's an action. Why do I say that? Because as God defines it in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8. Now, if we define love as a feeling, a lot of times I didn't feel like being loving towards people. Being honest. Really, like sometimes on, on one end when somebody was saying something to me, I'm, I'm almost like, well, I got to, maybe you're like me. I, I had something that I could say, and I'm like, that's not love. I'm not going to say that. You know, it's like, have you ever been there? Somebody's saying to you, something to you and you're like, man, I got this on the end of my tongue. And it's like almost something that really be heard from really. But you know what? I'm not. Go I'm going to choose not to say that. I feel like saying it. I feel like doing it. You know, those actions. But so love is not a, a feeling. We are, feelings are a good servant. But they're a poor master. We're not meant to be led by our feelings. We're meant to be led by our convictions by our faith in God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it tells us what love is. Love suffers long and is kind. The first time I read that, I was like, man, that's not good. <laughs> you know, love is long suffering. It's patient. You know when love counts? Love counts most when you're unlovable. Or somebody else is unlovable. That's when you really can see because you know, a God kind of love is when somebody's not responding to you the way that you want them to. It's easy to love people when they're doing everything that you want to. It's like obedience. People think like, well, I'm obedient. I'm obedient as long as you tell me everything to do that I want to do. That's not obedience. Obedience is when it was really tested. When is obedience really tested? It's really tested when we're told to do something that we don't want to do. And then we see how really obedient we are to the Lord and to the people that are around us. Love is the same way. It's like when, when so we're not getting the reaction that we want, are we going to continue on and make the decision? Because it says in Scripture, it says love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself and is not puffed up. It's not prideful. It doesn't think more of itself. I didn't say you have to think poorly about yourself. Sometimes people are like, well, you know what, I'm a worm, I'm just like, you know, I'm nothing. That's really, sometimes that's really false humility. That's really like, hey, look at me, look at how spiritual I am because I can make myself a lot lower than I am. But really what I'm saying to you is I'm the most spiritual person in the room. No, that's, that's false humility. That's almost like a form of pride. God doesn't want us to think less of ourselves. What he wants for us to know is who we are and esteem others. That's where it speaks about in the Bible. I don't want my children walking around with a poor self-image, but I certainly don't want them walking around pridefully thinking that they're better than everybody else. No, that's not the case. What we are as you and I, as children of God, we can know who we are in Christ, but then also we want to esteem others, and that's, that's what humility is, is recognizing the greatness of God. Recognizing the value that is inside of every person, no matter where they've been in life or what they've done or accomplished, good or bad, that they're still valuable. So love does not parade itself and is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own. Well, let's go into rudely a little bit. Rudely doesn't, love doesn't interrupt people. 
uh, the behaviors. It doesn't slight people. It doesn't give them the silent treatment. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't minimize people's feelings. Those are things that are rude. Love does not behave that way. Love does not seek its own. Some people, you know, it's like you see them, it's like, uh, as long as it benefits me, as long as it benefits me, and there's nothing wrong, I, I believe, uh, with things being mutually beneficial, but if somebody loses, here's what I try to do always. I try to always look for win-win. Here's what I, I look for. I want to, I, I don't, I don't think it's wrong for you to benefit, but it shouldn't be out at somebody else's expense. It's okay. Uh, this is what I look for, a win-win situation. You benefit, and I benefit. Praise God, that's a mutually beneficial thing. That's a win-win. But there are some people that are, they, they don't care about what's going on with another person as long as they get ahead. That's the world's kind of love. That's not the God kind of love. Jesus wasn't thinking that when he took the cross of Calvary. He wasn't thinking that when he w was uh, died an embarrassing, shameful death, that he didn't have to die for us. Gary wasn't thinking about all of himself when he was uh, faced with that, when the, the attack came against only What he was thinking about is he was thinking, he was otherly. Love will cause us to think about another person, cause us to think past ourselves. And that's why I say love is so powerful because uh, love will bring you out of yourself and into uh, an anointing that God will use to accomplish things that you wouldn't normally face or bring, be brought into because you love somebody. Love does not seek its own, and it's not easily provoked. You know, that's the truth about a love. Love is, and I think it's mentioned there twice for a reason. Because if you look at it, it's like, love is long-suffering, but then it says love is not easily provoked. Sometimes people have to measure, if you have a quick temper, guess what? You're not really walking in a God kind of love. If you're, if you're always on edge or you got a short fuse, then guess what? You know, we need to kind of maybe back up. Sometimes it's like, hey, listen, maybe we shouldn't be doing so much. Maybe we shouldn't be. We need to get saturated in the presence of God and saturated in the Lord's presence and get recentered with Him. So what's flowing out of us is the God kind of love, not something else. We want to be filled with love, not filled with other stuff. It tells us that love bears all things. This is what I love, this, these last verses. Love bears all things. It believes all things. Now, some, I used to think this as well. I always got to believe the best, almost like a point where I'm like throwing away my common sense. No, love is not stupid. It doesn't say that. It says love believes, it's always willing to believe the best about a person, always willing to give them a second chance. It's not ignoring a person's track record. It's not ignoring what they've done, but it's always being willing to see the best inside of a person. And that's what I want to do. I want to walk into God kind of love. I want to always believe, no matter how many times somebody may have fallen short in a certain area, I want to believe that it's possible. Why do I believe that? Why do I want to believe that? Because it is. It is possible. You never know when somebody's breakthrough is going to come. So we ought not to ever give up on anybody. Amen. Sometimes it's just that last one, you know? It's a, just one more time. And it, it, this is a, a, a saying that I heard once before. Um, some people don't know how close they got to success before they gave up. Man, I don't want to give up. I don't want to give up on people. I don't want to give up on the Lord's promises. I want to continue to persevere. And this is the truth. I have seen that most often the breakthrough comes at a breaking point. Just when you feel like giving up and then you push a little bit more, that's when you get your breakthrough. When you're at that breaking point, that's a good place. We have to know that that's a good place for us because you know what? That it's we're just getting on to the other side of what God has for us. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. And this one, I promise you, and I say this and I translate it: If you want to never fail at doing something, do it in God's kind of love. Do it out of love for the Lord. And do it out of love for people. Because this is what it says. Love never fails. It will always succeed. When we're walking in the God kind of love, we're always going to succeed in what He's called us to do. If it's His will. And we're doing it out of love for Him and for people. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will all vanish away. So, what does that scripture say to us? Everything else is going to disappear. I love what Jim Elliot said. Jim Elliot said this, he said that uh, he is no fool who gives that which he cannot keep 
for that which cannot be taken away. Now, Jim Elliott was a, a famous missionary, but what made him famous is that he gave his life in service to the Oaka Indians. His wife, Elizabeth Elliott, went on to continue. The man had, a, he went and he was a missionary and he knew that his life was in danger, but he went because he was, he loved the Lord and the Lord directed him, but also because he loved God's people. Some people would be like, well, you know, in the end game of it, for all eternity, I guarantee you that he's going to be uh, placed in a special place of honor with, for the Lord. See, faith uh, and for us and for you and for I is that when we walk in God's kind of love, this is what I, I know happens. Fear gets destroyed. Fear will, fear will be, always be overpowered by love. If you think fear is a powerful motivator, think about this, is that sometimes people will be hindered from doing something because they fear, but they will never face things or put themselves in harm's way for fear. Love is the only thing that will bring a person into a place like that. See, there was a man that uh, was fa faced with a challenge once, and it was going to cost him his life, so he shrunk away from it. He, did it. he shrank away from the challenge because he was afraid something was going to happen to him. But a loved one faced the same challenge, and he, what he feared, he faced because love overpowered fear. See, that's where, that's where God wants us to be. God wants us to be motivated not by fear, but by love. Because that's the most powerful force in heaven and on earth, on either side of heaven. It says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. I remember a, love will do some supernatural things. I remember hearing a story about a mom who was uh, driving and there, a, a telephone pole fell on the car and um, her daughter got trapped or her, her child got trapped in the thing, uh, in the car. And she was there, I mean, she's like 120 pounds soaking wet or whatever it is, who knows, maybe, you know, you can vary. <laughs> but she lifted the telephone pole off of her child. Why? Love was surging through her. It wasn't fear. It was a love that like enabled her. I mean, it was a, it's supercharging to do something. She looked back at it, and it was like almost an impossible thing, but she pushed the telephone pole off of her child. There was another mom that went through uh, England, and uh, it was a really cold time, and it was this blizzard that uh, she, would, she had a newborn, and she was carrying her newborn through the blizzard, and... Uh, she knew she wasn't going to make it. And this is an old story. This is something that, this is one of my old, 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 old Rob stories that kind of motivates me. And uh, so she was going through this blizzard and she knew she wasn't going to make it. She was holding her child. And I was like, wow, you know what? Her and her child are going to die. Well, what, she, what ended up happening was is that a, a rescue party went out and they went to find the mom and her daughter or her child, the baby. And they did, the mom didn't make it, but this is what they did. This is that they, they saw the, the mother's body, and they thought, well, you know what, they both died. Well, let's get the remains. What they found was is that the baby was still alive. What the mother did was is she took off all of her clothes, and she surrounded the child and swaddled the child, and she used her own body to make sure that the child survived because she wanted to give that child. Fear does not do that. Only love will do that. Love is the most powerful force on either side of heaven. When we tap into the God kind of love, there is no stopping you in what God wants you to do. He'll bring you into places, and then when he brings you into those places, he'll make sure that he enables you because God will cause for us to abound in every good work. God loves us just as much as we love him. Well, actually, I should correct that. He loves us way more than we love him. And if he brings us into a place, he's not going to bring us this far to fail. He brought us this far by faith, and he's going to bring us the rest of the way, and he's going to bring us the rest of the way to succeed. See, God's very nature is love. I think about that in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. That's what attracted me to God. That's what pulled me in, is that God loved me. God wasn't measuring me by my past. He wasn't measuring me by the labels that other people put upon me. He might, wasn't measuring me by all of these other false things. What he, was, he saw inside of me, and it's the same thing he sees inside of you. You're his child. 
There is nothing that will ever change when, when it's parents, we might know this, your child can do all kinds of crazy stuff, but it's still your child. That person is still your child. When I first had my uh, uh, son, first son, I got that revelation. I thought I knew God's, God's love. I thought I knew. I was sitting on the steps. I didn't spend any time with this child. As soon as my first son, Elijah, was born, he went into the emergency room. My wife wouldn't even leave the emergency room because she just stayed there. I remember going into work, and you know, we were both teachers, and I had to go back to the hospital. But Elijah was just, he was, he was fighting for his life at the time, and my wife was there. I was sitting on the steps, and I was praying. I was like, Lord, please, you know what? And I realized that God, God started to speak to me. He said to me, you know, as much as you love that child, because I thought, how, I, I said, it's crazy how much I love this child. I don't I haven't spent any time with him. I don't know him. He can't even talk. All he does is cry. All he does is like ask for stuff. It's just like, completely, it's one side. But you know what? I just love him. I would give my life to protect him. And then this is what the Lord said to me. As much as you love him, I love you way more. And then another revelation, as much as you love him, I love him way more. Sometimes we think we love people. Guess what? God is never going to love our son more. He, uh, he, we are never going to love our sons more than God loves them. That's big. That's big time. Think about how much you love the people that you love the most in your life. Well, you know what? Double that. That's how much God loves them. So that helped me because sometimes I would think, well, you know what, I gotta go help this person, I go help that person, I gotta. Yes, we do by praying and trusting a loving God that He's gonna take care of everything. Because sometimes we get in the way. We wanna go and save people, and God hasn't called us to be little messiahs. He's called us to pray and intercede and to trust Him so that He can be big, He can be God in people's lives. Now it says also in the next, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, in some verses. I thought, wow, you know what, people, we came up in a faith church, and I'm all for faith. Faith is, is something that we need, we need to believe, but faith works by love. I was like, whoa, faith works by love? And it's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. I thought, faith, it moves mountains. Faith, it will a mustard seed. Faith, well, according to our faith, we will receive. And you know, faith is an important thing, but this is what Scripture says. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And now abide faith, hope, and love. If you read in the King James Version, it says charity, but these three. But the greatest of these is what? Love. love. Hey, I didn't say it. God said it. Faith is powerful. Faith is important, but it works by love. First, we got to understand God's love. As we understand God's love, his, our obedience to Him will increase. Amen? I mean, how do you have faith in somebody that doesn't love you? You can't. We gotta, we got to understand God's love. It says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith work through, working through love. That's how faith works. Faith will work. And how do we increase in our faith? Well, I'll tell you. I'm not going to give you a bunch of uh, hermeneutically, uh, theologically, eschatologically. I'm, I'm going to tell you practically. Because you know what? Sometimes people, it says in the scripture, knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. This is how I grew in my understanding. This is how I became bold for the Lord. Is that I understood His love. It's that simple. If you want to increase in your faith, you need to increase in your understanding of God's love. Here's, here's my love, understanding for the Lord. I used to think, well, you know what, God's going to love me, but I can't make any mistakes. No, 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 no. That's not the God's kind of love. God loves you. I'm not asking you to challenge this, because this is, if you challenge this, you're kind of like a little stupid. Uh, and you're more <laughs> I'm going to speak to you plain English. Because you know what? You can't sin enough that God doesn't love you. There's no way. Sin will not keep you out of heaven if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's, or, or sometimes you're like, well, uh, don't say that, Rob, because uh, then people will sin. Well, if you sin because 
you're able to, guess what? There's something wrong with your maturity in your relationship with God. Here's why I sin, don't sin, because I know that God is aware of everything and I love Him so much that I don't want to do the things that hurt Him. That's why you do too. You don't, you don't do those things because you don't want to hurt them. You also don't want to hurt the people that you love. You also don't want to hurt yourself because this is what this is the destruction of sin. Sin will destroy your life here on this face, the face of the earth. Sin will interrupt other people's lives. Sin will distract and derail you and detour you on a destiny that God has for your life. But your eternal security is made sure by the sacrifice that Jesus made. Does everybody understand that? So it says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, we love Him because He first loved us. There's a, there's a, a process there. As we receive His love, some people are trying to love God in their human effort. Can't do it. Here's the way that we'll increase in our love. Just receive His love. Receive how much He loves you, and then you will want to obey the Lord. It won't be something that you have to do. It'll be something you get to do. There's a difference in that. There's a difference between I have to do this and I get to do this. I get to love upon these people, not I have to love upon these people. It, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's not semantics, but it's a heart condition. Take a look, take an observation. Is this something that you want to do or is this something that you have to do? There are some people that they, they're just passionate about it. And that's where we need to be, be engaged with it. Because God has gifted you and anointed you in something. And you don't have to do it, but you want to do it. For, always for me is this, is that I've always wanted to read and study and study and know the Word. I, I feel at home with like five different Bibles. And I'm like, I just want to spend time with God. I'm like... Jealous for time with the Lord. I just want to be with Him all the time and listen to Him. And here, it's not a labor for me in studying the Word. Now, I know there are other people that experience God in different ways. But for me, that's, I love, just love to study, to, to understand the Word of God. That's the way that God created me. There is also some people, that, they love to experience God in nature. There are some people that love to experience God as they're worshiping and singing playing an instrument, or singing, or exercising their gift. There's other people, they just want to serve. That's another one of my spiritual gifts. I just want to serve. I just want to love upon the Lord. How do you receive the love? How do you get close with God? We need to know that, our pathway. How do you receive from the Lord? How, 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 do, you, how do you receive His love? Thinking upon Him, meditating upon Him. This morning, family, I want, I, I want you to have a, a, a right understanding of what God's love is. God's love is not a weakness. It is strength. When we're attached to God's love, it's a fuel that will never run out. It'll cause us to have a passion that will fight for the people that are around us, to fight for the king. It will cause us to never fail in anything that we are ever going to do in our lives. You will always be successful. Here's what I tell people. It doesn't matter what you're battling. The sickness, the addiction, the compulsion, the debt. Whatever it is, if we're doing it out of a love for the Lord, I guarantee you that you will prosper against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. As the two or three are gathered and they're walking in that unconditional love towards one another. We're a force to be reckoned with. Here's, a, here's an attitude and a mindset for a born-again believer walking in the God kind of love towards God, but then also towards one another. I'm not saying this is... I'm gonna, I want you, you need to be, instead of running from the enemy, you need to be picking a fight with the enemy. Picking a fight with him. Sometimes people are like, well, I don't want to declare war against the enemy because he might attack. Pfft, who cares about what that guy thinks? He's underneath my feet. He's a defeated foe. He, he's like the biggest, he's, a, he's the biggest weakling in the school. We need to put him in his place and walk in and tread upon scorpions and snakes. Too many people are impressed by what Satan's doing. I'm not impressed. I'm impressed by what the Lord is doing and how he's going to give you a testimony through this test, a message through this mess, through a victory through this battle, a triumph that he's going to allow you to have and to receive 
I want to, at the next service, we're going to go over what a triumph really is. Because sometimes people think triumph is just a, a victory. No, it's a lot more than that. Brothers and sisters, this morning as, I, as you bow your heads, I'm going to pray over you. Pray that you would be blessed. That you would operate in the God kind of love. The way that we're going to operate in that is that we're going to make time to spend with Him. And we're going to receive more of His love. I believe that's something that He wants from us in this next season. He wants us to grow in power. He wants us to grow in strength. The things that shook us yesterday are not going to shake us tomorrow. Greater victory for you in every area. Whatever it is that you're dealing with. whatever He, he doesn't want you fighting the fight. He wants to fight your fight for you. And the way that He's going to give us that strength that's going to be working through us. According to the power that works inside of us. It says he'll do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can hope, ask, or imagine according to the power that works inside of us. That power is going to be refueled by our relationship with him. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We're passionate lovers. Lord, we're not fighters, we're lovers, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we love our brother and our sister. It may pull us into battles and into fights, Lord. But we're, we're there to stand up for our brother, stand up for our God, stand up against the enemy who would try to steal, kill, and destroy. We thank you, Lord, that we have been placed on the face of the earth to be agents of change. We're not chameleons, we're catalysts, Lord, that we change everything that we enter into, Lord, because the presence of God is so rich in our lives, Lord. Father, when we're dealing with enemies, Lord, that we're loving our enemies, Lord, that, Father, that the, the love of God exudes from our life, Lord, that it, ex it causes sickness and infirmity in every form and fashion to flee from us, Lord. I thank you, Lord, as we receive the very nature of God, very nature of our Heavenly Father, Lord, that your DNA, the divine nature, would be acquired, Lord God. I pray a blessing over my brothers and I, my sisters, and I thank you, Lord, for their passion for you, Lord. As long as we follow after you, Lord, or as long as we love you, Lord, and we're doing what you've created us to do, Lord, that as we do that out of love, Lord, that there is no devil in hell that can stand against us, that we have the victory, Lord, that we are enforcing that victory here upon the face of the earth, Lord. Download into my brothers and my sisters, Lord, more of your truth, more of your love, Lord. Let it wash away lies and deceptions, Lord, so that they would see you for who you really are. Lord, every one of us needs to have our filters uh, changed, Lord. Every one of us, Lord, needs to have our filters washed, Lord, so that we would see and understand your love, your unconditional and everlasting love in a, a clearer and more powerful way, Lord God. Not a one of us has a full revelation of your unconditional and everlasting love, but bring it to us, Lord, as only you can, so that we can be those agents of change here on the face of the earth. I bless my brothers and my sisters. And I thank you for them, Lord. Let them know how much you love them and how much we love them. In Jesus' name, amen. God loves you guys. Thank you so much.